Hi and welcome, it's Morgana here and today I'll be doing something a little different. I'm going to be painting some loose koi fish using Colourcraft Brusho colours. So on the screen you'll see the colours that I'm going to be using today but I'll uh, list them here anyway. You'll need sandstone, yellow ochre, sunburst lemon, alizarin crimson and grey. Of course you don't have to use these colours, these are simply the ones that I ordered uh, and the ones that I chose to use for this particular demonstration. Uh, so you can see that I've already roughly sketched some koi onto this large piece of paper. These are by no means uh, detailed sketches at all. These were just very roughly drawn in pencil for me, just uh, vague outlines which I'm now using my straw mop brush to fill with uh, clean water. And now that my outline is fully wet, I'm going to be coming in with my brush pigments. Uh, this is yellow ochre to start, and uh, what I've done is um, I've used a corkscrew to poke a hole in the top of each little pot of pigment so that you can just dust it on like you would with uh, icing sugar or something like that. Uh, this is now sunburst lemon going on here. Uh, some nice uh, earthy colours to start off with. So you can see now I'm repeating the same process, wetting the outline of my second fish uh, and I'm going in now with sandstone this time which is uh, a lovely darker, almost uh, terracotta hue. Uh, you really don't want to be too precious with this stuff. Um, it's wonderful for anyone who's just starting uh, because you honestly just pop it on and uh, watch it do its magic. It really is, uh, I think it really is superb. And you can see here that I'm just using my brush to uh, pull a little bit of pigment out of these concentrated areas uh, to give the fish some fins.
So this is where I decided to change up the colours a little using my laser and crimson and grey pigments uh, for this next fish. As you can see here, this uh, grey colour goes on really well uh, and it splits out very quickly into a myriad of different shades which uh, makes it so much fun to use and I think it blends wonderfully with this alizarin crimson which has such a vibrant pink hue. Um, I think it's just a really nice combination and uh, I know I'll be using it again. Oh, apologies for my little concentrating face popping in there. Um, I do find it awkward sometimes to uh, film and paint at the same time. I'm always trying to lean around the camera and find a good angle where my elbow isn't in the painter or I'm not putting my thumb in it. Uh, so I do apologise. There's probably many more moments like this coming up. Uh, what can you do, eh? <laughs> So for fish number four, I've gone straight in with Sunburst Lemon uh, and as you can see, I'm sprinkling it so liberally all over this chap because I want him to have such a bright summer sunshine hue. Um, but I also want to see how well the grey pairs with it because uh, yellow and grey is uh, one of my favourite colour combinations. So you can see me just splodging on a wee bit of grey here, <laughs> struggling to reach around the camera tripod again. Um, but yeah, yellow and grey for this chap. And something that's really great about this stuff, this uh, this brusho, is that while it's wet, uh, you can use your brush to pull the colour around. You don't need to just let it sprinkle on and do its thing. You can actually guide the pigment as well. Uh, you can let it follow the uh, the channel of water that you create, and it will uh, it will flow, uh, and it will blend really easily too.
Uh, and for this last fish, you can see I'm going straight in with a load of alizarin crimson because uh, I love Howard this colour looks so much. Uh, you can see it really brightly sort of flowing and uh, splitting out so beautifully. Uh, and I decided to complement it with some sunburst lemon uh, to really give it those rich, deep sort of summer hues. I uh, really wanted this one to be a real showstopper. Uh, and I think the uh, the colours really did themselves proud. So there we are. I've done my final adjustments to uh, the colours on these fish. I'm happy with where they are at the moment. Uh, so the next step is to let these dry fully. Uh, and then I'm going to go in just very simply with my fine liner uh, and add a few little details that's uh, really going to bring them to life. So now the painting is dry, uh, I'm going to go in with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen. Uh, this is a fine liner in black, uh, 0.5 thickness, so very, very fine. Uh, and I'm going in and I'm just doing some little details on these fish. Uh, you can see just going around and putting uh, a few outlines in, nothing too drastic. Sort of halfway between outlines and shadows really, I'm not outlining all of them. Um, I'm just putting a few edges in here, trying to incorporate the white of the paper into the shape of the fish as well. Uh, you can see here particularly on this top left one, I've left quite a lot of white on him, which I think uh, worked really nicely, uh, darkening some of those edges. And you can see on the bottom left one there, I've uh, given him a little face as well. He's, uh, they're all going to have eyes and they're all going to have whiskers.
and there we are we are done for today um i hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial um i hope this inspires you to give it a go you can see how quick this was bar the drying time this is such a quick uh, and easy painting you can do this in 10-15 minutes depending on how cautious you are with the brushes or quite how gung-ho you are when you're slinging them around uh, and then yeah you can see just little details popped in with the fine liner really just uh, bring these fellows to life i'm really pleased with these i think they look lovely um, i hope they inspire you and i hope they inspire you also to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more art tutorials or more demonstrations like this uh, so yeah, thank you very much everybody. Bye!